Well, love it. Welcome back to the shop. Well, winter time is here and it's always a good time to do all of the maintenance type of things that you've been putting off when you push your equipment hard throughout the summer and winter time. Traditionally, farmers and ranchers have spent that time to get things you know, put back in order and nothing better to be in the shop when it's pouring rain outside by the wood stove and uh, working on your stuff. So today we're going to do be part two of getting uh, finished up on the skid steer, the 249D3. I got the wrong filters from Cat. Finally, everything found its way in and we'll just jump back in it and hopefully get that this big hunk of iron out of the center of my shop we'll pick up where we left off with the hydraulic filter you maybe remember they gave us the wrong one from cat they gave me this big tall one and i knew right away that that wasn't it some of you said that this was a there are two hydraulic filters some somewhere else that goes in the tank but i i can't see that anywhere in the book so let's match up the part number but i think we're good here Two one five four seven nine. That looks better. This housing is pretty dirty. I don't want to get that back in the filter, so let's pull this out and we'll take it over to the solvent tank and get that cleaned out. That looks better. Now these O-rings, they didn't send replacements, but they're probably fine. We'll put a little grease. Check them. We'll put a little grease on them. Reinstall our drain plug. Now the, the book has a torque value on this. <laughs> well, might as well, right? Oh, nope. Five, five as low as it goes. <laughs> five, four. Can I guess it? Yeah, it's not very much. I don't know if I trust that. This one's way back in there, so I'll... Put a rag on here, make sure we don't get any dirt in there. Why well, it's so important, so important to keep dirt out of your hydraulic and fuel system. All right, looks good. Let's turn to the fuel filter. This is our new fuel filter, and this has got a float bowl on the bottom. And I was just noticing, whoops. There's a lot of goobers and water and even particles in here. So I'm concerned about my fuel tank. I've got a 500-gallon fuel tank that I bought on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, whatever it was. It's pretty old, and, and I have got it filtered, but I'm going to make sure I keep an eye on my filters because look, look at all that sediment in there. There's even some water in there. So I don't know if it's, it could have been from the previous owner or it could be from my tank, but the filter is doing its job, so that's all we can hope to ask is to drain that out of there. You can see that a little of that water in there, little flakes of junk goobers. All right, and then we've got a little drain plug here. This is uh, part of your maintenance on your machines, and the reason why they give you these float bowls, so these transparent glasses, so you can, as you're walking around checking the oil and stuff, you can just glance at that and see if there's any sediment. This just redirects that fluid down, so it's not running all over your alternator. This got electric fuel pump here, so when we turn on the key, that'll cycle for 30 seconds, and that will purge the air out and fill this up, but we, we can't do that now with a cab up. So uh, let's turn to the air filter. The book says that there's a primary and a secondary filter in here, big one and a little one. 
The exterior one, or the big one, you're supposed to be able to clean two or three times. Also, when you see these on the bottom of your airbox, do you see that little guy there? That's just a little rubber boot designed to catch dirt and, and water and stuff, so you can squeeze that. So you always want to check that, make sure that that's, that's not clogged up. Oh goodness, that is bad. That's gonna be a throwaway there. Goodness, that is bad. There'd be no cleaning that. I don't know that I've checked this. When I bought it, it had so few hours on it, I didn't think it, it necessary. It wasn't even close to a service, but you just can't assume anymore. Pre-filter, hopefully, we're just going to replace both those. Pink, that's a good sign. I wonder who picks the colors for these. Is it uh, always seems so random to me. Well, something for everyone, I guess. Pre-filter. Yeah, it looks good. Before we put those filters in, we'll clean, clean out the inside of your box. There's quite a bit of dirt in there. My favorite cleaner, BioWash, made in California. Beloved, really take a look at the chemicals and things that are in your homes. Laundry detergent is one of the worst ones. If you can smell it, if it leaves behind a residual, that ain't it, man. A lot of these things that you buy in your store, you just assume that they're, that they're okay, that they've been tested. But most of the things you find in our grocery stores have been outlawed in, across other countries. That's because your, your, your government has been bought and paid for. They put the profit of corporations above the health of the people. And you've got to look to your own devices. So don't assume anything. Really limit as many chemicals that you're exposed to in your shop and in your house as possible. Look at that, that's pretty filthy. That's inside the filter housing. Next up, beloved, is we've got the hydraulic tank breather. That's a little vent right here underneath the cab. When I was, uh, when I bought a TD20 Big Dozer International, I was working with an old school mechanic, and he always told me, the book stays with the machine. The two are the same. And the reason for that is that you know, these things are complicated, and you may think you know everything. You know, this may not speak to guys that work on them every day, but when you don't, like I'm not a diesel mechanic, and there are little things that you can do that can nuke the whole system. So there's safety in the book. Just take a moment, you know, carve out some time, and go through the process. Read it, follow the instructions, and that way you're, you're covered. You know, that's why pilots use checklists. You know, these are complicated machines, and without the book and all that knowledge, you don't even know what you don't know. So I always take a moment and, and just go through the book. The book says this breather is tucked up underneath the cab right here. Yeah, there it is. Might need to get in deep to get after this one. I'm just guessing, but I'm, I imagine that diesel techs do not like working on these compact loaders. Next up, we've got a pair of cabin filters. Looks like it's the 
We got an 18 and a 19 different part numbers. How about that? Which one's which? <laughs> Let's see what the difference is here. Not mix up these part numbers either here keep them on their respective boxes well it's pretty simple one's bigs one's little okay let's find out where these are looks like we've got one on the outside on the left side looks like we've got an access panel right here oof that's pretty bad too. Looks good. So the little one goes outside and the big one inside. These cabs are pretty well sealed up. Now that you've got air conditioning in them, there's no reason to have to be all day breathing dust and such. So it's nice to see a robust dual filter system for the, the driver. Before we lower this cab, I'm going to clean out the front of this. It's like the holes in the bottom. It gets a lot of gravel and dirt. This will end up, this will cause rust. I think we are ready to lower the cab. This red guard right here locks into place so that it won't fall on you. I'm assuming, I don't know how I'm gonna push this up and relieve that at the same time. I need a, something to poke it with. Look at that. These big nuts right here on these body bolts, once you get this down is what secures. Oops. Oh, this one's not too... Oh, you can see the other one right there. So they're right there back to back. I can see the squirrel cage inside. So that's how it moves the air in. It's about ready, though. We've also got a new wiper blade from Cat. I hate to have dirty glass. It's one of my, it was one of my pet peeves as an operator is the state of cleanliness some of those guys to keep their machines in. You know, you got to look through this all day long and can't take a moment to clean it. So, Amsoil glass cleaner, goodness, it's, it's the best. If you're looking, if you had trouble cleaning glass, had streaks and such, I don't know what's in it, but boy, is it good.
Got some sticker left on there from the... Had to replace the glass. It got broken last summer. I don't think the guy's quite got all that off of there. Looks like they gave us the right one. All right, let's top off the fluid while we're in here. Looks like we're running a little low there. I, I built this, uh, I, I don't like to have clutter in the shop, so I built this false wall. I think, uh, got like five or six feet back here, but this is a, a good way to keep all of the stuff, kind of the unsightly stuff for all of your chemicals and such. And speaking of which, if you have a lot of equipment, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have an extra oil change of the vital things that you have. I think supply chains are going to be uh, stressed, especially if you have things that are not super common. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have uh, an extra. I keep a, two extra oil changes for end filters, spark plugs, everything that I own. I guess, <laughs> no, the day wouldn't be complete, would it, beloved, without spilling of fluids on the ground. All right, gentlemen, I think we are ready to prime the fuel system. We'll turn on the key and then uh, make sure that that uh, fuel bowl fills up on that filter. Boy, nice to have an electric fuel pump. My old iron had the uh, manual one. You'd have to... Pump and pump and pump and pump. That's way better. I guess it's until it stops working. Double check our oil. Of course, I remember I put too much oil in it, so I'm going to make sure I got that drained out right. Perfect. I think we are ready to start it. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is we're going to change out the gears in the final drives. Our final task is to drop the oil on the final drives off the big bull gear. This is what drives the track, and these take a quart each. These are the final drives here, the bull gear, and this we need to start it up and rotate drive this until the drain plug is down and then we'll drain it and then we'll rotate it up to fill it. So I guess we're ready to start here so we can get going on that drain. Looks like about what, five sixteenths Allen. Not a bad idea to start with a clean pan when you're draining your oil, because it, it, you can see if there is any contaminants in it. You know any metallics and stuff. If you just pour it into oil that you've already that's all painted in there uh, that you've drained from multiple sources, who knows? You know where the uh, Metal flakes or the contaminants would be. I have a little paint in there. Brush. 
brass hammer. Brass hammer is a nice thing to have in case you need to pound on things you don't want to mar. The brass is softer. I'm gonna say that looks pretty good. Probably didn't even need changed. But what is a couple quarts, right? This is must be magnetic. Sometimes these plugs are they'll put this looks like to be one, a magnet in them. Yeah, that's a really good thing. And that, that way uh, any shavings, metal, anything metallic will collect to it and it keeps it, you know, kind of pulls it out of the oil and keeps it from getting into valving and work in the and the gears. Well, that's draining, I'll go around and hit all the zerks. Okay, that's pretty well drained out, so now we'll start it and rot rotate this forward until that plug is on the top. I put my phone camera there so I can look out the window and see when that plug is up. And that's it. We'll just fill up until it comes out that middle plug and we're set. Well, gentlemen, that is about the size of it. That is a full 500-hour service at about 250. I figured, well, why not, right? What's a what's a little bit of oil and filter? I'm not a diesel mechanic, and this, this is something that you can do yourself. It doesn't it doesn't matter if tractor, cat, whatever. You got the internet, you can do it. Don't be afraid of doing it. I mean, who with these in these days has got the money to pay? 
uh, $150, $200 shop fees, not to mention all the dishonesty and, and the extra expenses and all the, you know, who knows, who knows what they're doing. I'd rather just do it myself. This is going to be the name of the game in the future is that you're, we're going to, we're going to, if we want to or not, we're going to be forced to have to start fixing and repairing things that we may have uh, turned loose onto other people in the past. It's just, uh, the way that it is. I don't think necessarily think that's a bad thing either. I've been guilty of it. It's easy to do when you don't have to, but growing up, we always did everything. There was never a, a maintenance guy. There was never anyone. We, we did our own work. We rebuilt our own engines, transmissions, whatever it took, whatever you had to do. It wasn't something that you wanted to do. It was just the way life was. We didn't, uh, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, Gen X, especially a lot of the Zoomers, the younger people think that, think that, man, how nice was it when, back in the day when you had so much money and things were so much easier than they are now. Uh, they weren't. You know, we didn't have nowhere near as much. I mean, we never ate out. Never, ever. I mean, maybe once a month. Uh, we didn't get new things. We had, you know, one or two changes of clothing. It was a simpler and, and different time. And it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's not, it's not as good as you may think it was. Um, it's just, it was just the way that it was. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers and we'll see you all on the next video.